comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to, uh, before I get into some other questions, I want to express my concerns over the antitrust division's proposed recommendations regarding consent decrees on performing rights organizations, uh, specifically ASCAP BMI. Um, rather than meaningfully discussing and reviewing these consent decrees, the antitrust division appears to have committed uh, instead to reinterpreting existing agreements in a way that fundamentally changes the way license uh, rights are jointly owned music is performed. You've heard this already. Uh, this, this, the concern it can be broken down in a couple of ways. Number one, this goes completely as contradictory to the U.S. Uh, Register of Copyrights, completely contradictory to uh, the information that has been given from there. And the Antitrust Division's proposal to reinterpret the existing consent degrees to govern the PROs recommends a shift to 100% licensing and away from the current form of fractional licensing. Uh, the reviewer of copyrights has previously said this is, it violates basically the principles of copyright law and interferes with creative collaborations among songwriters, negates private contracts, and impermissibly expands the reach of consent degrees. The way I see it, American songwriters are grasping for air in the, in the uh, antitrust division just took them off life support. And there's issues here because in this instance, the acting head of the division of the Department of Justice is making a decision that flies in the face not only of another agency, but also and putting an industry at risk, there is at least the appearance of conflict of interest among this head with the person making the decision at DOJ based on our previous experience. Now, listening to you all day, I'm not expecting a direct answer, unfortunately. But, we, and your answer earlier doesn't ring true. You've answered several times that they're continuing to look at this and be a part. Well, let me just add, I've had conversations with parties that have been a part of this, and they have been specifically told that the division has concluded that it would not be in the public interest to modify these dec decrees into fractional license. That sounds like it's already been made up. So we're going ahead and just preempting the time, and I would just ask, would you be willing to uh, look at this, considering the concerns here, and do an internal independent review of this uh, antitrust decisions recommendations? Well, thank you, Congressman. Again, as I've said before, my understanding, as has been briefed to me, is that the antitrust division's review and recommendations, the review is not complete and the recommendations have not been made, that while they are consulting with various stakeholders, and I do not know if those are some of the individuals with whom you've spoken, that that discussion, that those discussions, I should say, are still ongoing, the, the, and that it will be still a few more months until I they appreciate that. I'm going to reclaim my time here because this is an issue that I know may not be on your radar at this point. I'm wanting to put it square in front and center on your radar because this is a decision that affects a great deal. But it goes back to something that's very disturbing. I never thought I'd say this. I actually, and, and I say this with due respect, Attorney General, I, I miss Eric Holder. Because at least when he came here, he gave us answers. We didn't like it. But I've spent the last four hours listening to basically the Attorney General of the United States not willing to make a concrete statement of law. To not be willing to say that when given the opportunity by a colleague of mine, who made the decision in this case? I understand Director Comey stepped up and said, here's the decision we recommend. And y'all, you have been willing to say as well, we just accepted the team recognition. When given the opportunity to say, do you accept this decision? You've never answered directly that you own this decision. Do you own this decision? Congressman, as, as I've stated, I made the decision, and I do accept. I, d I did accept it, and therefore, I made the decision to accept that recommendation. You, that was the action that I took. The problem that we're having here, though, is you took a decision because you had to. Your own words just a few moments ago, that the meeting on the tarmac led you to do something. That was your exact words. It led me to do something, and that was basically recuse yourself, but didn't recuse yourself. You just said, I'm going to accept what they tell me. It led me to discuss a decision I'd already made about how the matter Had you already made. had conversations with the team before you made this statement and before the meeting on the tarmac? No. Uh, before I had a conversation with former President Clinton, I had not spoken with the team. I had concluded in my mind how it should best be resolved because I had tremendous faith in their work and their integrity. Did you have uh, it as in so best be no resolved as far as what they're that. doing and the way it was going about or the end outcome? I had no conversations about the end outcome of the investigation. Do you believe that there is such a thing as a strict liability offense? Depending upon the statute, the environmental no, matters, No, no, no. We, we went to law school. Is OSHA, there strict liability there offenses or not? In OSHA, for example, there are. In that a some yes of our environmental no. cases, there are. Simply yes or no. I've given you two, two examples. No, I want a yes or a no. Is there strict liability? I've given you two examples. I'm not, in, this is, again, the issue that we have here is there's no ownership at DOJ. It's no wonder the optics of this are so bad. I've never agreed probably with David Axtrod in my life, but the optics of this are terrible, and you have, today have made it worse. And as a, also a member of the military who just got through with my drill duty this weekend, you have basically, to me, offended every military member here who handles classified information, who does so with their training, and you basically said, well, it depends on this. I got a question for you. 
riding down the road. The speed limit says 55. I'm doing 65. Have I broke the law? You'd have to ask the highway patrol. Oh they would God. likely write you a ticket. <laughs> they would likely write you a ticket I, for I'm that. I'm not sure. I, I went to a small little, no, you know, little small law school. We taught the law. Harvard, I'm not sure anymore. Did you break the law or not? 65 and a 55. My dad was a state trooper. As Be I careful before, with your answer. You're under oath. As I said before, you would get a ticket for that. Okay, so you broke the law. You would, you would be cited for that. That would be considered an offense. <laughs> in this, the, the, this, the amazingness of this, when you've been asked many times, you said I'm not going to talk about this. The day after, you said, well, I'm just going to have to accept whatever they tell me because you're not going to do any investigation. You're not going to put the attorney general, the top law enforcement officer's stamp of approval on it. You said, I'm just going to accept whatever they give me. Did you at least read anything before you had a press conference the next day? Did you at least look at the testimony from Hillary Clinton? Well, did you at least look at anything? Know, Time of the gentleman. I did not hold a press conference. Time of the gentleman has expired. The witness can answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did not issue a press conference. I issued a statement. I did receive a briefing from the team. It was thorough. Um, it discussed uh, the findings that they had come to. It discussed the legal analysis that they had made. Uh, my decision was to accept those findings, and as I've said before, that was my decision. As a famous leader once said, the buck stops with me. Please go read that. This has been depressing.